No matter what you say, Platinum Games and Nintendo were using their position of power to screw over the voice actress of Bayonetta. So the fact that they just threw her out into the cold, um, I decided I am not going to be playing or supporting the game. I'm not going to be reviewing it. I'm not going to be doing anything with Bayonetta 3. Don't buy this game. Or you know what? If you really need to play it, Wait till you find it used at a GameStop so Nintendo and Platinum Games don't profit off of it. This is absolutely monstrous. It's unacceptable. And Nintendo and Platinum Games should be ashamed of themselves. It's what did they offer to pay me? The final offer to do the whole game as a buyout, a flat rate, was 4,000 US dollars. Um, I recorded for four days. Oh wow! You did the inter was that Bayonetta one and um, two or half it half a day each? So four so four four hour sessions it took me. This is an insult to me. The amount of time that I took to work on my talent. Oh wow! I didn't think. I swear Bayonetta talked more than that. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I'm very quick, and so is Chris Zimmerman Salter. It was literally do three lines of each line and that's it. Um, it's very quick. Bayonetta always stands up for those with less power and stands up for what is right. And in doing this, you stand with her. So four four hour sessions it took me. What did they offer to pay me? The final offer to do the whole game as a buyout, a flat rate, was 4,000 US dollars. This is an insult to me. Um, it's very quick. Yo, what's up my fellow gaming individuals? I hope you guys are all having a great day today, just full of so much positivity and happiness, dude. Because today we're gonna be talking about some good old video game drama, bro, because it's time to rise up and stand up for a true injustice in the video game industry. And you know what, man? I'm not even gonna front. Like, this entire situation, I feel like, is just extremely pathetic, all things considered. And I really think this demonstrates just kind of this mentality I've had towards a lot of gaming content creators recently where they're literally becoming the male Karens of the internet at this point. Like literally just looking for any little thing to get outraged over, bro. And I really can't look at this situation as anything else because if you actually look at the objective facts surrounding this situation, I don't think anyone is going to be as outraged as they are right now. And honestly, I just feel like this entire thing has been completely overblown. Now, I want to put this in a particular framework because when you're dealing with the entertainment industry, a lot of the times you have a situation where people are chasing a pipe dream, basically. Like, everybody wants to be famous, everybody wants to be an actor, a musician, a celebrity, you know, a YouTuber, a professional streamer. Like, entertainment is a very, very hard industry to make it in. And personally, as someone who could support themselves by making YouTube content, streaming, or whatever, I still have a real job because I know that it's not a sustainable future unless you literally make it into that like top one percentile of all content creators out there because it's such a competitive landscape and nothing is certain in it. I mean, how many stories have you heard about people that quit their jobs, move to California to go pursue their dream of acting and end up working as a waitress with nothing but a pile of broken dreams left behind? Like this is the most common story in all of American history, at least in the modern world, where people pursue this dream thinking they can make it their full-time career and they they fail miserably. So this is nothing new and I just think it's very interesting that we're supposed to feel sympathy for someone who made a conscious choice to not work a real job and try and support themselves financially by chasing their dream like millions of other people have done. Like would you feel bad for a YouTuber that got on the internet and complained that they weren't making enough money to support themselves because they don't want to get a real job and they just want to make content instead? Like would you feel bad for that person? Probably Probably fucking not. I mean, look at DSP, Wings of Redemption, Boogie2988, bro. Like, do you feel sympathy for them when they get on the internet and shake their tin cup for the entire world to see? Fuck no, you don't. So why are we feeling the same about a voice actress who obviously should be treating this like a hobby 
and not as a career because if you actually look at her career she hasn't had a notable job in voice acting in the video game industry in over eight years. Like, you cannot call that a career. I'm sorry, that is a hobby. If you have not worked in eight years, that is not a job. I'm Like, I don't know how more clear I can make that, and I think there's a lot of context missing from the situation, so that's what I want to talk about here today. Like you saw at the beginning of this video, it took her 16 hours to do the voice acting work for the first Bayonetta games. That is four four-hour sessions, which equates to $250 an hour, guys. Like, are we really at the point now where we're getting outraged over the fact that somebody's making $250 an hour for talking into a microphone? You know, maybe I'm crazy for this, but I can't really think of many things you can do in this world other than being like a top doctor or lawyer where you make $250 an hour. Like, that equates to $500,000 a year if you worked 40 hours a week. Just keep that in mind, okay? These are not slave wages. This is $4,000 for 16 hours of Work. How many of you guys work two full work days and bring home four grand? Because I sure as fuck wish I did, man. And I mean, again, I'm just gonna play this clip because I really think it puts everything into perspective. Uh, could you explain a bit more as to, um, you said you only had two minutes and had to take away the script. Was this for, uh, how long did it take for recording and um, uh, between the first line and until the project was done? Um, I recorded for four days. Oh, wow. You did the entire... Was that Bayonetta 1 and um, 2? Or half, it... half a day each. So four, so four four-hour sessions it took me. Oh, wow. I didn't think... I swear Bayonetta talked more than that. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I'm very quick and so is Chris Zimmerman Salter. It was literally do three lines of each line and that's it. Um, it's very quick. Like, you literally have her bragging on a fucking interview that this was a quick and easy job, basically. Oh, just four, four-hour sessions. Like, no big deal. And what I think is even better, we watched a video from Yong Ye on this on stream last night. And honestly, I think it explains it perfectly. This isn't some big secret, by the way. If you go to the official sag -Aftra website, you can find a section where they tell you the, essentially, guidelines for the current established rates for the various categories like interactive, which is video games. And if you go to this section right here, Rate Sheet and Digest, there's a PDF that tells you what the rules of engagement are when it comes to union video games. And you can see here on this PDF that there is no section detailing a $4,000 payout for voicing a character for an entire video game. As someone who has worked on some union projects, this right here is a rate that I've seen fairly frequently where you essentially get paid almost a grand for up to three voices and up to a four hour day. So four four hour sessions it took me. As someone who has worked on some union projects, this right here is a rate that I've seen fairly frequently where you essentially get paid almost a grand for up to three voices and up to a four hour day. So four four hour sessions it took me. What did they offer to pay me? The final offer to do the whole game as a buyout, a flat rate, was 4,000 US dollars almost a grand for up to three voices and up to a four hour day. So not only is it meeting the minimum union pay, it's actually exceeding it. Instead of getting $940 per four hour session, she's getting a thousand. So it's exceeding it. I just can't really understand where this outrage is coming from. Like this is literally someone making $250 an hour and we're supposed to be outraged on her behalf that she's not making enough money. Like I guarantee you the game devs or the people who actually designed the Bayonetta character Character. Like, I assure you, they're not making that much money. The animators, the combat designers, they're probably making nowhere near $250 an hour. And they have the most important role when it comes to a video game, which is actually making the game fun to play. Because let's face it, man, the Bayonetta story and dialogue and all that shit is like very, very secondary. It's not that important of an aspect. Like, I don't think anybody would really care who voiced Bayonetta. It really wouldn't affect her character that much. I mean, shit, I've played Bayonetta 1 and 2 and I didn't even notice that the voice actress changed when they showed off the Bayonetta 3 trailer. I think this entire thing is really overblown, and I think what this entire thing boils down to is a severe sense of self-entitlement, because if you look at the comments that she made about the other voice actress who actually picked up the role as Bayonetta, like, she is on some absolute new levels of pettiness, man. We now have a new girl voicing her over. 
and I love actors. I wish her all the joy in the world. I wish her all the jobs, but she has no right to say she is the voice of Bayonetta. I created that voice. She has no right to sign merchandise as Bayonetta. And I think what makes this even more damning is the fact that she waited so long to talk about this, too. Like, she waited until the week before the game came out, until that perfect opportune moment to try and, like, ruin the launch of the game. So, I have zero respect for that as well, because who knows how many months or years it's been since she actually declined this role. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't like this type of stuff, personally. And on top of that, man, imagine if this was in any other industry, because for some reason, people hold anyone related to the video game industry to a different standard. I don't really understand why. Like, I guess people have an emotional attachment to the people behind video games. I personally do not understand it. Being someone who actually has a job and works in the professional world, the way she handled this is beyond unprofessional. Like, could you imagine if you applied to work at, let's say, Walmart, for example, and, you know, they only offered to pay you $20 an hour and you felt like you deserved $30 for the job that you're doing? What would you do in that situation? Would you throw a tantrum on Twitter demanding everyone, you know, boycott Walmart? Walmart, never spend money with them again, or would you go look for a job somewhere else that pays you what you think you're worth or what your time is worth? I don't know, man. I think most people would pick the second option because the first option would be incredibly unprofessional and would make it that no other company would want to hire you because, you know, if they do anything to make you irritated, you're going to throw a tantrum and like slander their name on the internet. Like, I don't know. That's maybe not the best look if you're trying to get active work within an industry, but that's what I mean. It's like, why are these people in the video game industry? and actresses in particular held to like this different standard where this type of behavior that is extremely unprofessional is not only accepted but encouraged man it's like it's an at will employment agreement you're not enslaved to this company if they're not paying enough for you to do a job don't take the job. That's how at-will employment works. If a company doesn't value you enough to pay you what you think your time is worth, go work somewhere else. You have zero entitlement to work as a voice actress for a character if you want to, making as much money as you want to. Like, this would be a completely different thing if, like, say Platinum Games promised her $20,000 to do the voice acting work, and then they only gave her $4,000. Like, 100%. She would have a point. They scammed her. They ripped her off. They lied. They broke contract. She would would be in the right. But the fact is, is they made her an offer, she declined the offer, and that should be the end of it. That's how at-will employment works, and I don't understand why, because we're talking about video game voice actresses, all of a sudden it needs to be held to a different standard. It doesn't make sense to me, especially as someone who actually works a real job and has familiarities with contract negotiation and pay. But I think the cherry on top of all of this is the simple fact that we are literally talking about someone who makes 10 times times the average US income per hour for voice acting. Like, $25 an hour is the average income in the United States. She's making $250 an hour. Like, you are literally standing up for someone if she had consistent voice acting work who would be making $500,000 for the same amount of time that you put into your full-time job. You know, let that shit sink in. Like, if she would have treated this like a side hustle, done this shit on the side, had an actual job that she worked that provided for her, this would be a great source of secondary income. But no, she's still chasing the pipe dream that this is going to be her full-time employment opportunity, which if you listen to this clip, it obviously ain't working out, especially considering the fact she hasn't had a job in voice acting for video games in eight years. I am not afraid of the non-disclosure agreement. I can't even afford to run a car. What are they going to do? Take my clothes? I don't know, man. As somebody who works in the entertainment realm of things, technically, as my, like, side hustle, it's just really hard for me to feel sympathy. Like, imagine if I got on stream, for example, and I streamed for 16 hours, and at the end of the 16-hour stream, I was bitching to my audience that I only earned $4,000 at the end of the stream. Like, could you imagine how badly I would get roasted, bro? Like, most people don't make $4,000 in a month, and I'm sitting here bitching that I made $4,000 in 16 hours, basically. Like, that is absolutely incredible. I just don't understand why it's a different fucking standard that these voice actors are held to. Like, that is literally what's occurring here, because if it only takes her 16 hours to record the voice acting for Bayonetta, like, why doesn't she just have a normal job and go record this shit on the weekend when she has some free time, get some side income, and, you know, keep living her life? Like, she doesn't have to worry about money at that point. But instead, she feels like she is entitled to do the work that she's passionate about 
out in order to chase her dreams versus, you know, every other person on the planet that does voice acting, let's say, as a side hustle or as a hobby or maybe even doesn't even make a fucking dollar from it. They just do it because they're passionate about it. I just can't find sympathy. I think this is literally the attitude that DSP expressed perfectly. Honest pay for honest work. Fuck you. I don't do honest work, asshole. Only suckers do. <laughs> Only sucker works a 9 to 5 job. But yeah, man, I don't really have much more to add at this point. I think I've hit all the topics I want to discuss. Overall, I think this is a non-troversy through and through. You know, it's the perfect case of a company not offering to pay someone enough money and someone declining the role, which they're perfectly within their right to do. I just don't understand throwing a fit about it on Twitter and acting like they're a victim when you're the one who turned down the work in the first place and you have no entitlement to voice a character because obviously your voice is not that unique that they can't replace it. So I think this is the perfect example of someone who's trying to make their hobby into a career and has failed miserably at it and refuses to accept the reality that they will never be paid as much as they think they should and their voice is obviously nothing more than a commodity that someone else can fill that role for but i don't know guys let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below are you gonna pick up bayonetta 3 or not personally i'm not getting it because i think the game looks like shit personally my decision to not buy the game has absolutely nothing to do with this entire thing it had more to do with the fact that when they've showed off gameplay the frame rate looks absolutely fucking terrible and the game graphically looks like a mixture between a ps2 and ps3 game but i don't know man are you guys excited for bayonetta 3 let me know in the comments section below and if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button i would greatly appreciate it and as always i do want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well you guys are the fucking best and i really do appreciate it so with that shit said i will catch you guys next time